humans and machines. What is the interface of, of that in the future? We're clearly looking at a world to where we're increasingly overlapping with machines and robots and automation and smart technology, computers, mobile devices, virtuality helmets. It's, it's a dizzying amount of change. And we're inventing new stuff every minute. And now in a COVID crisis, technology has become a winner. Everything around technology people are excited about. They're excited about the possibilities. They're excited about being able to work from home. I mean, it's mind-boggling. The last six months have brought more transformation than the previous six years. I don't know about you, but I, sometimes that's quite overwhelming. But clearly, this is a big question. How far do we go with this? And what does it mean for gifted children, this conversions of humans and machines? Can we think of a computer as being gifted? No. And why is that? And can we use computers to, to assist us in that process of nurturing gifted children? Absolutely. And really what it is in the end, it's about both. Right? Androrhythms, the human things, and algorithms. You know, Androrhythms are these things that make us human that a computer would be hard-pressed to pursue. Uh, we have, of course, the Moravec paradox, which, which says that uh, whatever is easy for a computer is hard for a human and vice versa. And that is still so true. And so nurturing those things, both of those in gifted children, that's really important. The ability to understand technology and the ability to be human and the human-only skills that we have, right? emotions, intuition, compassion, mystery. And we don't want technology to take those away. We don't want to sacrifice our emotions, our, our free will, because the computer has a better idea of what we should be doing. So that is a really important path, I think, for the future. That's where gifts are playing out. Gifts are much more complex than, than chips. You know, computers are binary and, and we are multinary.